in today's video what we're going to be doing is a little bit regarding what I talked about last week which is course management and using a yardage book so for today what I'm going to be doing is finding the biggest part of every fairway so one of the things that you can do with a yardage book is you can physically see from the shape of the hole which is the biggest part of the fairway and that's something a lot of pros do they hit it to the biggest part of the fairway so let me just emphasize that that does not mean that you're going to hit everything shorter like hitting three woods or irons off the tee. It, ju it just means that you're trying to find the biggest part of the fairway and it, it also could mean direction wise. Sometimes the left side is bigger than the right side etc. So for instance on the first hole I hit a three wood which normally I would hit a driver because on the right side as you could tell there is a bunker and for that bunker I could carry it if I hit a good shot however if I missed it and if you've watched my videos you would know that I'm in that bunker quite a bit because first of all it's the first of the day and you know if you miss it a little bit there's a high chance it's going to go in that bunker so because of that I teed off with a three wood which allowed me to avoid that bunker completely and give myself a bigger fairway because I don't have to worry about missing it right or left because I know that either way I'm going to be on grass. For this hole it is 230 to carry that center bunker but it's playing closer to 220 because it is downhill so my biggest fairway would be past that bunker as you can see I can't reach that bunker it's really far away and this bunker as well not with the wet conditions so this would give me my biggest fairway by going over the bunker so driver it is. So it looks pretty far away here but I think you can see this is the bunker on the right my ball is actually one line with this right bunker but like I said just now I can't reach that left bunker so like I said the biggest part of the fairway can also mean certain parts of the fairway so in this case the left side of the fairway is bigger than the right side and like I said with the driver it's going to give me a bigger fairway anyway like if I hit a three wood I have to kind of worry about that um, bunker in the center which obviously we don't want so this is the biggest part and towards the left side is even bigger for me for my distance that I'm hitting so another thing that people say is that you should always hit to the center of the green um, for me that's a little bit controversial like for this green I think that it's it's impossible to just aim to the center and think that that's a safe play because look at this green it is so skinny I mean center of the green here is basically hitting it perfect so the center of this green though could be actually more towards the right side oh nice chip <laughs> the right side of this green because obviously there's just grass here and there's water on the left side so you have to create your own quote unquote center On this hole, it is 220 playing 229 to carry that center bunker and if you carry that, it runs out quite a bit so you can reach that this right bunker right here. So technically this is the fairway but I mean it's a really small fairway. Um, yeah, you basically have to carry over this bunker I think that will give it the biggest fairway if you're trying to get to this part of that fairway. I mean past the bunker and not short of it short of the bunker the fairway is bigger because when you pass that bunker there are those other bunkers on the right side so I think I mean okay for the sake of today I'm going to hit short of the bunker but one of the things that you consider like for instance if I'm playing a tournament and I'm trying to map out this hole and thinking what I should do if I hit a good drive yes I can carry that bunker and that would actually allow me to have a chance to go for two on so I think that kind of makes a difference because first you need to consider like oh if I don't hit a good shot and I go in that bunker is that like game over like am I gonna have to chip out or am I still gonna be able to lay up because it is a par 5 so if you are able to hit if that bunker is not like with a super high lip and you're still able to you know hit a good decent shot and give yourself a third shot into the green 
I think it's worth taking the risk because like I said if you hit a good shot you can go for the green in two which is a big difference because that's one shot that you can remove from a hole whereas if I lay up there's no way that I can go for the green in two however obviously if I lay up the bunkers all don't come in play so you kind of have to think and just decide like is it worth it to try and go over the bunker and give myself a chance to to on and it's also something that you can decide on the day itself like when you're playing you can be like am I hitting my drives good today like what's what's the percentage of me going into the bunker and not and what's the percentage of me actually pulling off the shot that is a lower higher risk shot because of that I'm going with five wood to be completely short of all the bunkers So same rule for the second shot, biggest part of the ferry, my ball's right there. Obviously that's the smallest part, like two bunkers surrounding both left and right, so anything short of that is actually fine. So obviously I misread the putt and didn't make a birdie but I avoided all hazards and I gave myself a 5 footer look for birdie. So I think this is one of those things that you can perfectly see like obviously there's benefits to being able to go for green in 2 but if you lay up to a good distance that you like you also give yourself an equal birdie opportunity. So this depends on what you're comfortable with and what you think is best at the moment in time in my opinion. with par fives same dilemma like if you hit a driver you have a chance of maybe being able to two on but on this hole the two on is very dangerous anyway it's a pretty narrow green um, water surrounding basically the whole right side and short of the of the green it's kind of like an island green but not really but the left side is OB as well so I would never really go for this green unless I have anything less than 200 and in so I would have to hit a pretty good drive anyway. So hitting it, hitting a three wood, I'm just giving myself a good layup, giving myself a good position. Obviously, the biggest difference is the second shot is going to be longer for me. But I mean, I'm laying up maybe with a six iron versus an eight iron, which is what I normally hit. But I mean, it's still an iron. It's still a layup shot. So just playing as a three shot par five versus two is the biggest difference. So this one is a super long hole, so it doesn't really matter which is the biggest part of the fairway because I can't reach anything out there, the bunkers are like super far away and yeah, so this is just bombs away. So I didn't hit a great drive there, my ball's here. You can tell it's about mm, almost on line with the bunker. But this hole is kind of odd in that like if I hit a 3 wood, I would be like a lot shorter because it was still like 256 to reach the bunker. But if I hit a 3 wood because I don't know if you can see that, but there is a slope right there. 
you see right there that is like almost 200 to carry so if you don't carry that slope you're gonna go like down in a huge ravine and I mean there's just no way you're gonna roll anywhere so you're pro I'm probably gonna be like back there like 50 yards further if I use it through it so even though technically I could have reached this bunker which made my fairway smaller like I mean there's just no point in me having something like 200 yards into this green like that's just ridiculous and even if I was in this bunker like right now I have 130 yards so either way I would have been hitting like a 9 or 8 iron and it would have been completely fine for me so yeah just some factors to consider if you're this if you're thinking of like laying up versus being aggressive which in this case it wasn't really laying up or being aggressive it was for me the only logical choice but yeah obviously not everybody's gonna hit the same distance as me some's gonna be shorter some's gonna be longer so it just depends on you So obviously par 3s are par 3s, you can't really hit to the biggest part of the fairway but you can hit to the biggest part of the green. Um, that was what I was trying to do there but I think a little bit sometimes just when you don't really trust it because I was trying to hit it to the center of the green and I know that with that club I hit a draw so for the center of the green if you hit it a bit left it's going to kick left. So yeah, you know, that, that just goes to show that I think that center is not always the best if you're not committed to it like I said before you have to make your own center like create your own center point because like let's say a pin is on the right side your center could be more shifted towards the right side I mean I don't know it really depends on your short shape but I think you can't just blindly follow you know what people say and just go oh center of the green is a great aim yes but I don't think all the time especially when you don't trust it the best is always to make sure you feel comfortable and that you trust what you're about to do because if you don't trust it shots like that happen <laughs> Okay, so on this hole again, I am my ball is like over there, and this is the bunker. I'm one line in the bunker again. I'm not really doing a good job of showing you guys um, how to do this, but at the same time, it's like this fairway is really narrow anyway. And for my shot shape, I actually trust my driver way more on this hole than my three wood. Like I said again, it's always a comfort thing for me. I think that whatever you're most comfortable with, and I wasn't hitting my three wood very well today, so I feel like. The three woods having a bit too much of a draw, which honestly for this hole would have been fine, but I just didn't like the looks of it. So for me, the driver was more comfortable, and I also did hit a good drive. So if I missed it a little bit, I probably wouldn't have reached this bunker. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, what we try to do is always try to hit it to the biggest part of the fairway. However, you always have to consider like if you do miss it, what is the worst that could happen? Like is it something that you really want to avoid? Like for me, if I hit into this bunker, I'm fine with hitting into this bunker because then at least I have something like a 7-8 iron to the green versus having something like a 5 or 6 iron. So for me, I would prefer having the shorter club. But obviously it depends as well because what are you trying to avoid? If it's a bunker with a high lip, obviously then that makes a huge difference. Whereas if it's a pretty flat bunker, I think that it's completely okay as long as you're a good fairway bunker player. <laughs>